Cheaters never prosper, or do they? No, not in this list anyway. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 times gamers got banned for the right reasons. Number 10, a guy playing Apex Legends, streaming, might I add, a cheat stream. If you're unaware of what those are, it's when you stream with cheats and part of the allure is seeing the streamer cheat. Being it's a multiplayer game, cheating isn't actually a cool thing to do. It's certainly fun to cheat in a single player game. Certainly fun to use mods in a single player game. To modify your experience so that it's what you want it to be. That's cool. Not in a multiplayer game, not in Apex Legends. The unexpected hit, the battle royale game that randomly is awesome and free for anyone to play. No, not cool for you to cheat, sir and not cool for you to stream it. So in the Apex Legends subreddit, which by the way, has devs actively watching in, a user posted this guy's streams and says this guy's cheating and streaming it, and it's making it bad for other players. Sure enough, he was banned. On stream still, however, he got a username from somebody else playing the game, rejoined and hid the username so he could continue to cheat in peace. However, they were able to find him through various teammate names. Who is this mystery player in the group? Why, it's the cheater, of course. He got banned again. In fact, he got banned a bunch of times until he literally said this on the stream. All right, I guess I have to find a new game to cheat on until I can get a working spoofer again. He eventually caught on to the fact that Reddit had been posting about it in the Apex Legends sub and started blaming Reddit for the problem instead of the fact he was cheating in a multiplayer game, which is a dick move. Number nine, just last month, a speedrunner playing Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy, which is a kind of niche physics platformer that is frankly a ton of fun, claimed to beat the game in a minute and 13 seconds. Now, the previous record was a minute and 19 seconds, and when this record is beaten, it's usually beaten in terms of microseconds, in just tiny iterations. And the reason for that is there really isn't any way to cheat it. It's a singularly contained experience, it's not competitive as you're playing it in any way. It requires motor skills, timing, a lot of thought, and a well-developed muscle memory based entirely in the game. As somebody plays getting over it, it may end up easily throwing them right back down the mountain with a tiny mistake, a small mistimed jump at the wrong time. And watching a speedrun of it is honestly genuinely amazing if you've ever played the game. I cannot speedrun it, it just doesn't happen. But given that there are no skipped frames or cuts or any modifications to the video that are at least apparent in any way to the 1 minute and 13 second speedrun he uploaded, it's been very hard to figure out how he cheated. Now the original run isn't still up, he deleted it, but somebody backed it up, and although it looks like a normal sped run of the game, a lot of people theorize that he used some kind of program that slowed the game down allowing him to play the game in slow motion and sped it up from there. People were really consistently skeptical that it was even possible to beat the game at that speed, and as of right now, it's turned out to be the truth. The runner, a person who uploads by the name of CCFST, admitted that he cheated and was banned from submitting speedruns for six months. Although during the course of the dispute, somebody actually set a new legitimate record at a minute and 17 seconds, which still shaves a couple seconds off the one minute 19, and maybe even to some extent learned from the faked speedrun, which is interesting to think about. Number eight, a user by the name of Miss Q Gemini, a CSGO player, got caught cheating and then also really lying badly about it. So she was playing CSGO as a CSGO player is wont to do, and you know how there's a kind of a cheat where you see skeletons of all of the other players through the walls so you know where everybody is at all times? You know, like, one of the more common cheats that people talk about when they're like, I hate cheaters. So her live stream had that on it, and everybody in the chat was like, hey, you're cheating, and we see it. She tried to pull this move where she said Clara, her friend Clara, had been over. I'll quote her. Clara, let me message this girl. Why is this on my computer right now? Where is this? How do I close this? Which is great. Honestly, it's really funny. It's really not believable, and the computer obviously is like, I don't really care why you're cheating, you're cheating. And she had to move all of her stuff to a new Steam profile because the other one got banned. Number seven, near the end of last year, at a Counter-Strike Global Offensive tournament, a player by the name of Kumawat got caught trying to close an aim assist program that was open on 
his computer in the middle of a match. There's only a few reasons you would have an aim assist program open in the middle of some kind of an esports match, and all of them are cheating. There's not one of them that isn't cheating. Like the number one reason you would do that, for instance, is to have the computer assist you in aiming, which is particularly uncool in a tournament setting where the whole point is to find who plays the game the best. Kumawat actually got banned for five years, and we're about halfway into the first year of that ban. And still we're going back to this video of him trying to stop the officials from looking at his computer. That's gonna be one that's gonna be hard to live down, and there's just basically no argument for doing that. You just look like you're trying to be a sneak in every version of this story. Maybe it's because you're trying to be a sneak, that's like what it was. Number six, there's some pretty amazing, goofy stuff that people get banned on Xbox Live for, specifically for things that they include on their profiles. And then it's equally as funny when they try to get their account back. Like one user who obviously registered another account called Your Purdy Mouth, which they posted to the community saying, I have not received an email or anything. I was banned for no reason. The account was Steelerman3686 and I demand that it be unbanned. One of the moderators responded by including a censored version of what their bio said. And it's just basically a lot of different curse words and racial slurs, which is specifically banned by the terms of service and notates you can get a ban. When another user did something similar, posted, can I get banned for having the freedom of speech, saying, title says it all, can I get banned for saying racist remarks and profanity, Ahmad responded, references to freedom of speech or the United States Constitution's First Amendment do not apply to Xbox Live, as we are not a government agency, nor is Xbox Live a service of a government-funded institution, which to all of us living in the real world is an obvious thing. But for a lot of people who haven't necessarily gone through fifth grade yet, don't really know that that's how the First Amendment works. It doesn't happen as much anymore because the whole process is different than it used to be, but hey, people trying to get their accounts back after doing something just blatantly against the rules is pretty funny, honestly. Number five, a Twitch streamer did a pretty large 24-hour live event to commemorate his passing of 800,000 followers. He went by the name of Trick2G, and that's quite an accomplishment. As part of the stream, he decided to fake a swatting, which if you're not aware, a swatting is a practice where somebody prank calls in a crime and gets police to sort of barge in and in some cases, kind of attack the streamer. In theory, swatting can be very dangerous and you shouldn't do it. People have died from it. So if this is the first time you've heard of it, don't think that it's like a cute trick to play, it's not. But do you know what else isn't a cute trick to play? Pretending to be swatted on your 24-hour live stream where you have hundreds of thousands of people excited you passed a milestone. That's what Trick2G did, and a lot of people were really worried and upset about this, which they had to confirm was a joke later on their website. However, it did get them a ban. The ban only lasted a day, and they were initially worried it could be several months. So, obviously, not the harshest punishment of all time. But still, don't do stuff like this. People really think that you're in trouble. Number four, the staff at Neverwinter have no shortage of people who come in and scam in their marketplace. Now, I don't have a username, but a person posted their banning, and the action listed is permanent account ban. The violation listed is openly admitting to scamming other players, which is a pretty just sounding thing to ban them for. If you're like going around an MMORPG being like, yep, I'm scamming people, you can check it out here, this is scamming, and somebody does it and verifies like this is a scam, they're scamming and they're literally just telling people. Yeah, you should get banned. It's not even trying. It's almost even like you're trying to get caught. It's weird. Number three, 12 pro gamers got banned from an eSport competition when a big PUBG shakeup happened. In the PUBG Europe League, 12 professionals were caught using an unauthorized program. And the league did not reveal what program that was, but it's believed to have been a radar hack, which is particularly difficult to detect from a server side detection algorithm. You'll remember us talking about this same kind of cheat back in number eight, where Miss Q Gemini claimed that she wasn't cheating after being caught cheating on a stream where you could clearly see that she was cheating. 
it's that kind of cheating, where you can see everybody on the map, where they are, through walls and all that. Four of those 12 are getting a three-year ban from competing in any professional league affiliated with the PUBG European League, which is pretty wild. The lesson is, of course, don't do that. Especially in professional competitions, if you get caught, you're screwed. Number two, Blizzard banned its worst griefer ever, and it was a serious ban too. They banned his account and all future accounts this person could ever register because this person who had played thousands of matches of Overwatch just to grief. A popular streamer by the name of Tim the Tatman explained that he might stop broadcasting Overwatch because there was this single person who kept continually ending up in their matches and just attempt to ruin it. They specified that they used multiple accounts to do this with as well, and noted that it is extremely rare that players act like this in Overwatch, as the community rules are pretty strictly enforced, but this person managed to get through the cracks, and even managed to get into a bunch of matches of a popular streamer. They did say this, however, We recognize that not finding this player faster is an unfortunate failure of our developing reporting system, and we've already taken steps to quickly eliminate outliers like this in the future. I mean, seriously, what would you just ruin games for other people for no good reason for? That's a sad person. And finally, number one, perhaps one of the more interesting bands I've seen. A developer on H1Z1 who is basically streaming his cheat finding and banning, his rule enforcement, actually kind of a good thing to do if you're showing the community that you're actually serious about your own rules, was watching a player who had been accused of using an aimbot and was getting frustrated with the fact that he ended up not finding any other players to actually shoot and therefore wasn't using the aimbot that he was being accused of using. He was kind of just having a very dull game where he encountered no other players in H1Z1. So the developer got creative. In order to grease the wheels, he spawned a car just down the hill from the player in a place where he wouldn't have seen the car spawn because he wasn't looking. I mean, he would have noticed that there wasn't a car there before, but still, whatever. Anyway, the player noticed the car, got into it, and used the car to find another player, and immediately began using the aimbot. Of course, everybody watching the stream was like, ah, you got him, and they did. I mean, if a car just appears, don't get into it. That's not just an H1Z1 rule, that's like a real life rule as well. It's a trap, and when the trap was sprung, it worked. Have you ever seen anybody cheating in a game? Have you ever gotten banned for cheating in a game? Do you have thoughts about cheating in a game? Leave us a comment, tell us what you're thinking about, and if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.